Good morning, everyone. This is Mr. Pitts, and this is going to be um, Unit 2 to the Message of Salvation. Why the Gospels? Um, yesterday, we talked about the portraits of the Gospels, um, as each Gospel presents Jesus Christ as um, a particular um, um, understanding characteristic of, of Christ's nature as, as Lord, as Savior, um, as human, as king and as servant. So uh, today, though, we're going to talk about briefly talk about why the gospels are important, and and how each of those gospels um, helps us better understand Jesus' purpose um, as he came to save us from ourselves. The objectives: We're going to observe each gospel author, suppose dates, audience, and theme in regard to salvation through Jesus Christ. We'll comprehend the meaning and purpose of salvation. Um, and we're going to do so by doing an activity at the end of this that um, will require you to do some writing. Not too much, uh, but um, the uh, sub will have it posted and also will be on this PowerPoint as well. Okay, salvation through the Jesus Christ alone. All right, so salvation cannot come from anything else but through Christ alone. As, predicted, as depicted throughout the Gospels, that Jesus Christ comes to us um, in the means of to save us from our sins. So we look at Matthew. How does Matthew do this? So Matthew looks at Jesus um, as the promised Messiah. As, as said before, we see that, that Jesus is, is to the Jews, uh, or portrayed by the Jews, to be the king, um, king of the Jews. That's Matthew's point, is to portray Jesus as the king. And so when Matthew's presenting this, he's letting them know that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the promised redeemer, the one who's going to redeem um, not just Israel, but the world from sin. Mark uh, goes on and talks about Jesus, the king of all kings, God in flesh, the creator of all things, came to serve. And as I said before yesterday, Romans understood uh, understanding of God. Humans serve gods. Gods don't serve humans. The, through uh, Mark's message to the Romans, though, believers serve, believers serve God and God humbly through Christ, who is also God, serves us. So we have the opportunity, everyone's serving each other, though God gets the glory in all of it. He is the ultimate um, being of respect in this, in this aspect. However, it's basically um, a loving relationship between God and his people. And that's Mark. Um, so that's Mark's portrayal of salvation. So again, you have this. It's interesting how how the how the the orders of the New Testament put these two together. As as you have Matthew being uh, focused on Jesus as being king, while Mark focuses on him of being this um, this servant. And usually, as we as we said before about gods, you can say the same thing about kings. Kings don't really serve; they get served. But this king we call Jesus has come down to to serve us through salvation the death on the cross. Uh, Luke, um, Jesus as redeemed mankind, uh, as fully God and, and fully man, but mostly Luke focuses on Jesus being God. I'm mean, sorry, being fully man. Sorry about that. Um, he looks at him, um, at his aspects of, of, of his details of his, of his childbirth. He's only the, one of the few books that actually mentions Jesus, um, not just childbirth, but some of his childhood as he mentions him in the temple at 12. Uh, we go from there and we look at uh, um, um, Jesus' uh, words to certain people, who he walked with, who we, what he did. Um, the mention of Jesus being tired or hungry um, and, you know, and even experiencing, of course, what we will all experience one day, uh, unless the Lord comes back, death. Um, having to deal with, with death on a, on a personal level with somebody else passing away or having to deal with death on his own and being, you know, and suffering that way. And so uh, Luke's ideal of salvation comes mainly from the idea that Christ came to save um, not humanity just, just spiritually, but physically as well. And then lastly, John, Jesus is God, the second of the triune and also savior of all mankind. So um, I like this, this, this too, because you see that, um, and in, in retrospect back to Matthew and Mark, 
of how Mark looks at, Matthew looks at um, Jesus as king and Mark looks at Jesus as, as servant. Luke looks at Jesus as human and John, in the contrast, is Jesus as God. So, um, and again, uh, the second of the triune has come down to save everyone from sin. So again, these four books, though different um, in, their, in their goal to portray Christ, all have the same goal and understand, help us understand Jesus Christ in his fullness. And so I, I think if you put, put, put it all together, um, it gives the reader a choice um, to understand, you know, a choice to, to receive this Jesus. Will you allow Jesus to be your king? Will you allow Jesus to be uh, to serve you and, and to serve you with salvation? Will you allow Jesus to show you what it means to be human? And will you allow Jesus to be your God, your Lord and Savior? So, um, the common definition of salvation. Let's look at this, this definition of salvation. What is salvation? So, it means a, del a deliverance from sin and hell allows one to go to heaven, forgiveness of sins. These are all true definitions, but is that all? Um, we are saved from wrath. That is it, but uh, from God's judgment of sin. So, so it's more than just it's more than just not being able to go to hell or being forgiven our sins. We are saved from the wrath of God, according to Romans five nine and Thess First Thessalonians five nine. Uh, these verses explain how how those who are um, out of God's will um, or who are not a part of Him will receive His wrath. I mean, it's mentioned several times in Scripture that God the Father, if you, if, you know, if you're not a part of Him, He will cut you off. Just as our verse um, for this week that's coming up explains that those who are not a part of Him will be cut off. Um, but a loving God loves those who who's, who um, are obedient, and uh, those who receive His salvation will, will receive eternal life. Uh, our sin has however, separated us from God. And the consequences of sin is death. Romans, 3, Romans 6, 23. Biblical salvation refers to our deliverance from the consequences of sin and therefore involves the removal of sin. So this salvation, in, in retro, retrospective, literally um, helps us understand the removal of sin, almost the extraction, as if it has to be operated out of us. And, some, and I'll be honest with you, for, for me, I'll speak for myself, for, you know, um, Sin itself, a sinful lifestyle, because we have gotten so used to it, has to be operated, has to be extracted. And, and sometimes it it's, it's, can be severe but beneficial. And so that's, that's why I look at it that way, that salvation is more so of um, a means of removing the cancer of sin, if you will. Not just for forgiveness, but spiritual transformation offered to you individually and all mankind. So, yeah. It's not just about for being forgiven, but in that you're supposed to be transformed. Salvation rely, I mean, allows for transformation to everyone. And then lastly, man is triune, made up of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. So all three elements that would make a man, um, all three elements needed to be saved after the fall. So Jesus came as a human to redeem not just part of, of our being, but all of us. So this salvation re redeems our body, so we have an opportunity to have a new body in heaven. Our soul, which is, which is connected to, to um, our, our personality, if you will, um, who we are, and God makes our personality or who we are, who makes us who we are um, mentally. He makes us, makes us um, more like him. He makes it righteous. And then that spirit, the very, the very um, spirit that gave us life, gave man life, in Genesis and uh, guides and keepers that's reconnected to the Holy Spirit so that we will um, be able to be a part and relationship with God fully. Uh, one of the heroes of the faith that um, we mentioned last year, last semester in some of your presentations was John Wesley. This is what he said on salvation. He says, um, a present deliverance from, a, from sin, a restoration of the soul to its primitive health, the renewal of our souls after the um, image of God in righteousness, true holiness, in justice, mercy, and truth. So in other words, salvation is literally a deliverance of sin. It's a restoration um, back to what we originally were um, supposed to be. However, it's a renewal 
um, of our image of God. So it's almost like a renovation or a yeah a reset button uh, to our um, us being the image of God. And not and, and and of course it goes on to righteousness, holiness, justice, mercy, and truth. All those things that define who God is. God is not making us little gods, but He is making us more like Him. If that makes any sense. All right. All right, so this is going to be your class response for today as you close out of this, um, this um, time period. And one paragraph, of, uh, actually, it's, actually, the direction is going to be three paragraphs. So um, please, please uh, make sure that you do three, par- three paragraphs. Those are the, those are the uh, instructions in the subs notes. So in three paragraphs, five complete sentences each, explain the question. According to our conversation today, not yesterday, but today, what is salvation? All right, you're going to turn that into unit two to um, salvation response, and you'll be able to um, uh, finish that. Um, and that should be done by the end, by before the end of class is over. All right. Thank you again um, for your time. Uh, again, this assignment will be a formative assignment, so make sure you turn that in. Um, and uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday. Take care.